we are continuing our series that I'm calling Marriage 101 with an episode titled Grow Together. Hey, it's Amber, wife, mother, type A child of God. Here are little things we look at everyday issues from a biblical perspective with one simple goal, to know and love God more. Thanks for listening. A lot of times we come into marriage with these really hardcore beliefs and ideologies that, you know, we grew up this way and so this is clearly the right way to do things. And I've heard it said that we sort of come into marriage as two squares. And as you live together and refine each other, kind of like sandpaper, you rub against each other, um, you you kind of get those rough spots smoothed out so that you become less like squares and more like circles, which is a really wonderful thought that hopefully we're moving towards that, right? So as I said, so many times when you go into a marriage, whether you go into a marriage, you know, as you're a very young adult, or even if you've had several years on your own and you're a little bit older, a lot of times you come into marriage with these ideas of what you think are right. So it's your norm for how you grew up. So the way that your family did things, the the way that you've gotten in the habit of doing things, those seem very normal to you. And so that in your mind seems right. Well, your spouse may have come from a very different family background where they did things very, very differently. And to him, those things seem right. And I know when I was younger, it was so easy to butt heads about these things thinking that, oh, the way my family did it, that's clearly the right way. And the older you get, the more you realize, oh man, so many of these things are just so silly. The best case scenario is coming into a marriage and saying, hey, my family did this really, really well, but they didn't do this so well. But your family did this really, really well, and they didn't do this so well. So let's take the best from your family and let's take the best from my family and let's somehow combine these two lives so that it's the best case scenario all the way around. Now we also come into marriage with a lot of baggage, good, bad, and ugly. Every family has their weaknesses and their sins. Just like I was saying, like some families do are really strong in certain areas. My family was a very, very strong um, biblical family in terms of my family when they were in church. Whenever there was a church service, my family was there. They were there every Sunday. We grew up, even though my parents had sent us to a Christian day school, there wasn't a question as to if we would be in Sunday school. It was just a, if Sunday school is offered, you go to Sunday school, just like you hear the word of God whenever you can. Uh, That was something we were really, really good at. Steve's family was really good at, oh man, his mom made so many meals for me when we were dating. I was over there all the time. She just excelled at hospitality, which is not something that my family did a lot of. We weren't super gung-ho on that. We always traveled. Uh, Both my parents came from... uh, an area that was four hours away. And so since both of their families were there on holidays, we intended to travel away so we didn't have to host so much. And so, you know, you come into these families as you combine and become one family, there are sins that families become used to, generational sins. And those are going to be different no matter what family you're, you're with. Some Some families are, you know, they have hot tempers or speeding is no big deal. That's just what they do or using curse words or kind of not so kosher language is just something that they are used to. Every family has their baggage and their generational sins. And so as you combine these two lives into one, Again, you're coming into this place of saying, okay, I don't want to live with the sins or the weaknesses necessarily of my family. 
And I don't necessarily want to live the with the weaknesses and the sins of your family. So let's address both and let's try to get to the point of being the best of both worlds. Now, what you find, if you're anything like me, you find that it's very, very easy to slip into that same rhythm that you grew up with. So hospitality has not been something that has come supernaturally to me. In fact, on my list of goals for 2024, uh, that is a big one. I am definitely going to try to organize my house in such a way that it's easier to have people over, which I had done back in 2020. And then I worked like a crazy person, 2021 and 2022 especially. And then in 2023, we had a graduation and a wedding and a trip to Alaska and everything (laughs) sort of got crazy again. So that's one of my goals uh, to do because it's something that's important to my husband. Anyway, with that being said, the idea is that we want to bring two lives together and combine them into one life. Now you might be saying, Amber, why are you even talking about this? I've been married for 20 or 30 years. Because I find that the stage that I'm at right now, so I've had four children. My oldest is 23. My youngest is 15. My 18 year old is away at college. My 21 year old is married. And I'm finding that a lot of people my age get stuck. You get stuck in a routine and in a rut. It's not necessarily a healthy place to be for your marriage. Because we get stuck in these tendencies that we don't necessarily like or want to be in, but we're stuck there. So we go back to the same pattern over and over and over. We don't like the pattern. We're not happy with the pattern, but we're stuck there. And the the point of this episode is saying you don't have to stay stuck there. If I learned anything in 2021 when I walked into a nursing home and uh, signed up for a shift, I had never worked in a nursing home before. I had been a nursing assistant years and years, 20 years prior, 25 years prior. And then I had done elderly companion private duty. So I had been in, in older people's homes helping them with you know, individual help, which might be getting ready for the day or getting ready for bed or helping them bathe or something. But I had never worked in a nursing home. And I found out at the very old age that I am that I could do new things and that I I could step into situations that I didn't know what I was doing, but I could learn. And I could reap the benefits of saying, well, I've never done it before, but I'm willing to try and I'm willing to learn and just show me what you want me to do and I'll do it. And apparently I looked like I knew exactly what I was doing because they just sent me loose at that nursing home. They just gave me an assignment and they briefly walked me through their charting and I was like, okay, here I go. And I sort of stumbled my way through. But that lesson was a good lesson for me to learn at this age because it taught me the importance of not getting stuck in what isn't working, to be willing to get out of your comfort zone and try something new and reap the benefits and the blessings of doing that. I learned a ton from working in a nursing home for two years a ton that I hadn't learned as an elderly companion. And quite honestly, that I hadn't learned from being a nursing assistant in the hospital. I learned about, you know, people dying and about being in a secular culture as a Christian and how to be in this, in this culture and walk so that I don't smash people down, but somehow so that I make Christianity look appealing to them. And so I can love them and want them to to want to know me better and want to know my Jesus better. And I learned about just being in a position of being vulnerable and being willing to accept help. That is what all these people in the nursing home, that's the situation they're in. They don't necessarily want to be there. Nobody wants to be there, but they have accepted the point that they need help. And because of that, they have to be vulnerable. And it opens you up to the kind of relationship 
that you can get very close very quickly. And that's something for all of us to learn. You don't have to be 90 years old to learn this. You can open yourself up to being vulnerable with people on a one-on-one basis and telling them what's going on in your life and being open to encouragement and support and just sharing with them that your life isn't perfect and it isn't, you know, this picture of just everything is great all the time. You can open, open your life up and let people in. And that's where these beautiful, beautiful relationships happen. So what I found, as I was saying, not just are a lot of people are my age getting in these ruts where they're stuck in these behaviors where he comes home and sits on the couch or she goes and does this and we don't we don't ever, you know, do anything new together or or a lot of times, even unfortunately worse, is that people at my age, when their kids are going off to college and they're starting their lives away from home, a lot of people my age find that they no longer have much of a relationship with their spouse. This is a major point where a lot of people get divorced. And we don't want that as Christian couples. So what are we going to do to grow together instead of growing apart? So for so long, most of us have put so much time and energy into raising our kids. And we've you know dropped the kids off and we've gone to their sports and we've gone to their after school activities and we've taught their Sunday school classes and we've made sure that they stay alive. And now is a point that it's really important to start looking at our marriages and saying, how can we grow together so that we don't grow apart, so that we don't find that we're on totally different ends of the spectrum, just going our own own ways? How can we how can we maneuver this so that we are growing towards each other and not away from each other? So I'm going to give you some help, helpful hints, things that I have seen and thought about, and some of them we are doing. And of course, the first is something that I've talked about a lot, but read the Bible together. Uh, I've told you before that Steve and I like doing Charles Spurgeon's morning and evening devotions and then um, you know, praying together, and that is a way to create intimacy that it's you it's the court of three strands that we're told about in the book of Ecclesiastes it's you your spouse and god it is being vulnerable before the lord hearing what he has to say about our lives and then through our prayers going to him with our concerns whether they're for our children or our city or our country or our church or th- needs in our heart that we're feeling that we're asking God, you know, show us how to do this or, or what this is going to look like. And I cannot say enough, if you haven't started having devotion time with your spouse, and you know, some spouses, you guys can do Bible studies, you you guys are right there, and you're, you're both in the word, and you're um, very well versed, and, and a Bible study is going to be something that's right up your alley. Other people need to start with devotions or at least take the time to do the devotions five, 10 minutes a day with the Lord. This is just now you and your spouse. We still do family devotions at night with whichever of our kids is here, but just you and your spouse, it's a different thing. And I cannot tell you enough how reading the Bible together, doing a devotion together, or praying together can just put you on the same page. If you haven't started doing that, I would definitely suggest that. Second thing, take a class together. What is there? Now, I have mentioned this before. I've mentioned it on podcasts. In my writing, I like to say this, that I love to ask Steve what he would like to do. So, you know, Steve, if we have 10 years left to work, what, what would you like our life to look like? You know, what, what would be ideal for you? What would you want to introduce as a hobby? Or what is one hobby that you've been putting off that you've never had time for? Or if in our ideal world, where would you like to live? Would you like to live the same place all year round? Or do you want to go somewhere for the summer and somewhere for the winter? Or I just love to ask questions like that to get into Steve's mind and his heart to know what is he thinking. And a lot of times he might not necessarily be thinking uh, ahead that much because we both have parents 
here and we both have children here. So it's hard to think ahead to a time where we may be at at a point where we could go do something else. But it's fun to think and to dream together. And so taking a class together is one of those things where it's like, okay, so what have you always wanted to do? You know, do you want to learn about beekeeping or canning food or gardening or taking French or baking bread or doing some sort of cuisine that, you know, would be really fun to learn how to, let's learn how to do Mediterranean cooking and let's go get these five great recipes that we could learn to make. And Steve is actually pretty phenomenal in the kitchen. He does a much better job than I do. He just doesn't take the time very often. So that's definitely something in our interest zone to just take a little cooking class in the community and do it together and have fun together and then be able to have that, that we can work on together. Another thing, travel. Uh, We just went to Alaska in October with our whole family. So including my daughter-in-law and We have done this with our family. This was a big part of our raising our children. We didn't start till the youngest was probably eight-ish, somewhere in there. But ever since then, we have gone pretty much almost every year that we could. So 2020, we didn't go anywhere. Um, and And that's it, I think. But other than that, we have tried to take a family vacation every year together And I have found that this is so much more important as the children have gotten older because we tend to all be going separate ways. As I said, I I have one daughter who's at college and one son that's gotten married. And so we don't see each other as often as I would like to see each other. And so we go from, you know, hardly seeing each other at all to being together 24 seven. And during that time, we're able to just really get to know each other again and, and spend time and, and find out what's going on with each other, the good and the bad. We see each other's sinful tendencies and those are things that we can pray about, but we also see the positive qualities in our children and in each other. And uh, it's just something that's really important to us. This last year, when we were in Alaska in October, we went to the Harding ice field outside of Seward, Alaska, and we climbed a mountain And Steve and I both said we were so happy that we did this at our age because we wouldn't want to try to do this at age 65 or 70. I'm not sure unless we really start training. That's one of the things that we said. We should probably start exercising together so that we can do this because it was definitely grueling and we could have been better prepared if we had been working out, you know, to climb a mountain and so, but we we both said too that it's important to us to travel when we're young because we may or may not be in the shape or the health to do that as we get older. And we want to do this with our children. We really have enjoyed spending the time with our family and we have learned valuable, valuable life lessons that we have been able to teach our children because we've taken them traveling with us. One time our car was broken into and we had things stolen. We had to call the police officers. We had to cancel credit cards. We had to, you know, take care of a lot of business. And that was really important for our kids to learn. What do you do in this situation? And they have learned how to have common sense. They know how to navigate airports. They know how to navigate roads and what you do when, you know, you get to a place and it's, and it's closed or the hours weren't right or what have you. And, and, uh, to explore and to find their way around and that type of thing. So, I'm very grateful for the things that my family has learned while we've traveled with them together. So that's that's another thing. And you don't have to travel to Alaska or to another state. You can travel two hours away. You can go to a state park nearby. You can go on a bike trail. You can just, it's just a matter of being intentional with your spouse and doing things together and then go each other's speed. Of course, one might be a little bit faster on the bike than the other if you're going together go the same speed. Uh, Another thing, I am just learning how to drive a manual transmission. So we were doing yard work this fall, this last fall, after we got back from Alaska, and we 
we have a one acre lot and then we do yard work for my mother-in-law as well. And so there were a lot of leaves and we put them in an old pickup truck that my father-in-law used to have. And then we take them to our composting site. And so we had multiple, multiple trips to take to this compost site. And so the first time we went, I said to Steve, you should teach me how to drive this. He's like, do you really want to learn? And I said, yeah, I do. And so the whole way to the compost site, he was telling me, okay, so you put the clutch in and you do this and this is first gear and this is second. And then you go over here to third and reverse his way over here. And he's, he's talking me through the whole thing. And so we get to, to the site and we dump the truck and I'm like, okay, are you going to let me drive now? And he's like, well, I mean, now? And I said, yeah. And so we drove up the road to a parking lot. We have a college there and the parking lot was empty. And he said, okay, drive. And of course, I stalled it a few times and screwed around. But um, since then, every trip that we've taken to either dump leaves or take brush or whatever, he always asks me when I want to go and I drive. And it has been a really interesting experience. I was going to say a fun. It's been very fun for me. <laughs> it's not always been fun for Steve, but it's something that we're doing together. And just that learning and growing together. And at the same time, I'm teaching my 15 year old how to drive. So it's been, it's been really good to be on the other side of the fence where I have to, I'm learning how to drive and I'm being told what to do. And then I can have a little more compassion and maybe be more patient with her as she's learning how to drive, but it's been a really fun thing. I wouldn't have gone with Steve all these times to the brush jump and to, to the compost site if I wasn't doing this. So we've been doing it together and it's been very fun, at least for me, not always for him when I stall in the middle of an intersection, but it's all good. It's keeping him on his feet. That's not, that's not a bad thing. Ministry. This is one of my favorite things too. find a avenue of ministry that you can do together that you're both committed to. I know some people that as they got older in years, they started traveling to different sites to help with uh, kingdom workers building uh, like, oh, additions to churches or classrooms or things like that. And that became a huge part of, you know, like a 10, 15 year time frame for them that they would travel every summer and go meet other people that a lot of times it was the same people meeting to do these things. Now you may not want to do that. That might not be your thing, but what ministry could you do together? Could it be hosting an in-house in-home Bible study or um, you know, being involved in some ministry at church that you both really want to do and that you're committed to? That gives you an opportunity to really reach into people's lives as a couple, show them that you're on the same page, invest in other people. One of the things that Steve and I are really good at is talking. We can sit at church and talk to people. And so for us, you know, it's not that big of a stretch to be involved in a ministry at church. And Steve is very interested in it. He plays drums. So the whole praise band thing. And for years and years and years, I organized the music and helped get things scheduled for the praise band and just being involved in some sort of ministry together where you can be at church at the same time, be invested in people and in a ministry working for the Lord. That is a great way to grow together and to use your time quite honestly on earth. I mean, we all want to use our time in meaningful ways for God's kingdom and God's glory. And so that's a super great one. And then the last one I'm going to mention is just the idea of investing in each other. So finding out, so I mentioned before that hospitality is pretty big for Steve. It's It was a big part of his family. His mom was a phenomenal cook. She made a, no, I, I don't know how to cook like she does. I tend to make things and Steve, Steve knows. I can have one thing warm at one time. And then I start then for me to get a meal out that it's all hot at the same time is for some reason, not in my whole like wheelhouse. I just, his mom would have baked bread and she'd have her side dishes and her meat and everything. I mean, like everything would come out on the table, piping hot. It would all look great. 
And uh, so anyway, hospitality is big for Steve. So finding out what what your husband likes to do, what your spouse likes to do, and investing in that. Steve has for years um, gone with me to travel when I speak places. I went to Alaska to speak at a conference. And for years, our family has gone places that I've been asked to speak. And so Steve has been investing in me and my life for and my interests for a long time. But I really am enjoying at this point in my life saying, well, what what would you like to do? We have a son who's big into snowmobiling. Uh, not my first choice, but I did before we went to Alaska. I bought a pair of snow pants, first time ever buying a pair of snow pants as an adult. Not sure why, as I've lived in Minnesota my whole life. But I'm going snowmobile this year with my husband and my son, if we get snow. And uh, because it's an interest that they like. And I want to be involved in the interests that are important to them. I went with my son to the trailer races last year and sat on his huge monster truck and went and towed cars that had gotten stranded on the track. And I had a wonderful time. I was I was scared for my life more than once, but if that's something that he is going to be interested in, I want to be interested in it. And it's the same with my spouse. As we get older, I do not want Steve on one side of the couch and me on the other side of the couch. I want us working towards things together. I want to be interested in his interests. I want to do ministry together. I want to be seeking the Lord together. I want to be just active in each other's lives so that we're always, always, always growing closer together because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Satan wants nothing more than to tear us apart. And between the schedule of life, the hardships of life, all the things that come along, it is easy enough to grow apart. So we have to be on top of things and really work hard to be growing together so that we're not being pulled apart. This has been Little Things, because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things.